Today we're going to be doing another live b-roll demonstration. If you guys haven't seen one of these before, basically it's like a super raw uncut style where you guys are going to follow me around and I'm going to shoot a little b-roll section on this and I'm going to explain to you guys what I'm doing. Then a little bit later down in the video I'm going to show you all of the shots that we managed to capture in like a little edited piece and you guys can see what we managed to put together. We've got a bunch of cool fun things going on here, all these colorful houses and like action going on down there. For this one I really wanted to simplify it so we're not gonna be shooting on any A7III's or crazy cameras, we're gonna be shooting on this little point and shoot. This is the Sony RX100 and no stabilizers, all handheld. I just have this Polar Pro little tripod here and the reason I have this is just because it's gonna help me with a lot of that micro jitter because I'm shooting handheld. It's gonna help me just get slightly more stable shots. That's a trick that you guys can try out. I think it's gonna be cool to be shooting on this little point and shoot because I want you guys to see that even if you're shooting on something like a cell phone by utilizing some of these tips and tricks you can still make your b-roll turn out a lot better. The first thing that I like to do when I'm going to shoot a b-roll section is just kind of figure out what I'm going to be shooting, have a vague plan and idea of how I want my video to turn out. It's way too easy to just go into a situation and start pointing at your camera at a bunch of random different things and at the end of it you don't have anything that really makes sense. So just before I shoot, I look around, I see the things that I want to capture and figure out what are going to be important aspects to include in my video to help me like portray the vibe that I'm going for in this situation. Another thing that I really like to do is work through it from wide, medium and close up shots because then I can make sure that I'm getting enough coverage and when I get back to the edit, I know I'm going to have enough footage. So basically what I've done is I've come up here onto this little like walkway thing because I'm getting a nice big view of the beach and I can start with a nice big wide establishing shot to open my video. I've switched my camera over into a higher frame rate. I'm shooting at 120 frames per second on here. If you guys have a camera that allows you to do that, you can do that because I love to get that slow motion. But just be aware that sometimes your camera does sacrifice other things when you put it over into that higher frame rate. Like you might lose as good autofocus or your image stabilization might be turned off, which is the case in this one, but it's worth the sacrifice for me. This is gonna be our first shot, super wide, big establishing shot. Just let the viewer know kind of where we are. It sets the scene for like what we're gonna be shooting. So this is a really nice setup. I'm gonna keep my movement nice and simple. I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna I'm just going to do like a nice slow punch forward and pan up, something like this. Okay. I think that's going to be cool for our opening shot. We're going to head down to the beach and get a couple of more shots now. Okay, so on our way back down, I've seen this pretty cool shot where I can shoot through this fence and just get a kind of nice frame. So I'm going to grab that quickly before we head down to the beach. I think something that's really important as beginners is I see a lot of people kind of doing these like panning movements like this and a much better movement that you guys can do, not to say that you should never pan, but one that I prefer to do is like a slide movement like this. So in this situation, instead of going from here and like kind of panning out to the beach like that, I can rather put it here and do one like slow slide like that. And that slide movement looks way more cinematic and professional than like something like this, like a pan. Something that I think is really important when you're shooting your videos, it's super easy to be like, cool, I want to get shots of those waves. That's super interesting. Definitely something I want to film. I also want to get shots of these houses. That's really cool, something I want to film. And what people often find themselves doing is they kind of like point the camera at the house and then they pan down to those waves over there and sort of get a shot of that. And that's fine a lot of the time, but what you want to try to do is isolate individual subjects and focus on getting a shot of just that one thing at a time. So instead of kind of just moving my camera around, I'm going to be really intentional with my shots. And I'm first going to get one really nice shot of these houses here. And then I'm going to walk down and get a nice shot of the waves and split everything up into their own little shots. And when you're editing, you can put them together and it's going to make a way nicer flow to your edit and it's going to end up looking way, way better. So our next shot that we're going to get is one of these houses here and I'm going to try to get it kind of backlit with the sun behind it. Unfortunately right now the sun is actually still quite high in the sky but since we're not filming any people's faces aside from my face that you guys are watching right now and I'm like squinting in the light but in this B-roll video we're not going to be seeing any people's faces too much so it's not too much of a worry. I'm going to try here get really down low. 
I'm gonna start my shot just on the side of the hut and then I'm gonna slide across and kind of like get that sun to disappear behind it and then come out again. So I'm starting here. Now that we got that shot of the house, now we can get our shot of the waves because we're separating them. So let's head down here to the wave. Another thing that I think is really important is when you are filming your videos, it's important to like get up in the action, you know? So instead of just standing back here, kind of pointing my camera at the waves and like getting a shot down there, I'm gonna move around, I'm gonna like get involved, I'm gonna head down here and like really get up close to that action it makes it way more immersive and more interesting to the viewer. So let's head like right down here to the shoreline and get a shot of the waves. We're right here, like close to the water. And something else I'm gonna do is just get like super down low because being up high is fine, but you see that all day, like changing your perspective and being down low really adds an interesting perspective as the viewer and you're gonna end up getting something much more interesting. I'm gonna just keep my slide movement going and I'm gonna keep the direction the same as all of my other shots that I've been doing as well. So I'm gonna go from right to left and keep them all flowing in the same direction. That's gonna make them cut together way better. Just do a little slide. And then I'll do one way close up of the waves like over here. There's these guys walking with this surfboard that looks really cool. I'm just gonna grab this shot quickly of them. Something that's really cool, and if you guys are ever shooting a shot but it just doesn't seem that interesting to you, an almost sure way to make a shot look better is by introducing foreground. So you can see here I got all this like long grass. And instead of just standing up here and kind of like shooting people walking past with their surfboards, that would be a fine shot, it would look kind of cool, but as soon as I get low and I get some of this grass in my foreground, it creates so much more depth in my shot and so much more movement in the shot. It makes it way more interesting. So if you guys are ever like, oh, this shot's kind of cool, but like it's just looking boring, see if you can introduce some foreground and it's like almost a sure way. It's almost like a cheat code <laughs> to make your shot look instantly better. The whole time while I'm trying to film, I'm trying to think of how my video is going to like play out in the end. So I've shown some surfers walking on the beach. It would make sense to then show some people actually surfing the waves. That's how the story unfolds quite nicely. So let's go and get one of those now. So I'm going to try and like get a kind of zoomed in shot of someone actually surfing a wave. Might be a little bit tricky, might have to wait around a little while. But if we get a cool one, it will work really well cutting it together with our other shot. So I noticed this like really cool flag over there that has a shark on it, which I definitely want to get a shot of because it's going to help like show what it's like being here, it like pushes that story a little bit more. And something I want to try with this is I love getting like really wide shots and then a really close up shot of the same thing just after and when you're editing you can cut them together and it works out really nicely and adds like a little bit of a cool effect in your edit. Yeah, that's really cool. And then straight from that shot, we can go and get like a super close up, not a super close up, but like a close up of the same thing. And then we'll cut them together and it'll flow really nicely. So we'll go like from here and we're like pretty zoomed in now and we'll just get like the same style shot. We're gonna try to get a cool shot sort of looking through these two houses here framing up the waves in the background. So I'm gonna add like some nice smooth movement, like just punching straight in and keeping everything like as symmetrical as I can. It's kind of hard when you're doing handheld, so I'm not gonna take too many steps. I'm kind of just gonna push forward a little bit like that. Okay, that was super dope. Pretty sure I got a surfer right in between there, standing up on a wave. So that one worked out perfectly. Something that I like to do when I'm shooting my little video sections is 
In the beginning of the videos, I'll often do a lot of forward movements like this. And then more towards the end of the video, I'll start doing clips kind of pulling back like this. And it just gives that sense of like going further into the story for the beginning. And then towards the end, it's kind of leaving and going away. And it kind of gives off that feeling to the viewer. Yeah, I'm just gonna get a kind of cool shot of all these surfers walking past. So I just wanted to take a quick second to say that if you guys are finding any of these tips useful and you feel like these videos are beneficial in you guys creating your own content, I have actually just released a whole video making course and it's 35% off for the launch. If you guys want to go ahead and check it out, it's going to be linked above, otherwise it's going to be down in the description. The sun's a little bit lower now and it's looking quite cool so I'm going to like get a, a sun flare coming out behind the roof, very similar to the other one, but I'm going to do it a lot more zoomed in and I think it will look quite cool. So. I'm gonna kind of start here and zoom in a whole bunch and I'm just gonna do like a reveal of the sun. Yeah, another one. That's quite cool. And then I also want to get one more shot of these houses just kind of showing all of them with the sun behind them. So we're gonna move a little bit this way. Pretty cool shot. So we're pretty much done with the video. We're coming to an end. I want to get one more shot kind of revealing the scene from behind this banister here. And then we're going to get one more shot of close up on the shoreline there. I feel like we didn't quite get enough of that. And we could do with one or two more of those. Let's first get like a bit of a reveal shot. So I'm going to start my shot kind of behind here with a lot of foreground. Reveal shots are super great. I really love doing them. So we're going to start like down here and just kind of lift out. Nice reveal. I'm gonna get the ending shot for the video now and I wanna have a shot that's moving back like this to give that feeling of ending. So I'm gonna jump up in here and I'm gonna start my shot looking through these little slat things and I'm gonna slowly punch back. Okay, that is going to be all of the shots that we're going to be using for our B-roll section. I am going to show you guys the end result now. I am going to put it to some cool music and do some basic editing tricks. Maybe some speed ramping, definitely some slow motion and a nice color grade. Once it's all together, this is how it ended up looking. That is pretty much it guys. I hope you think that that little piece that we put together was cool. If you guys actually wanna see how we edited this little video, there's gonna be an editing breakdown video put out in the next day or two. If you guys aren't watching this as it just came out, it might be out already. I'm gonna leave it linked up in one of these corners. If you guys want to see how that edit was put together, check out the video. It will also be down in the description. Remember that my course actually just went live. If you guys want to check it out, it's going to be linked down in the description. It's still 35% off for a limited time. So if you do want to check it out, now is probably going to be the best time. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in that editing one. Peace.